Welcome to the Demystify Medicine YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about allergies and how to combat them. Meet Emma. Emma is a university student studying health sciences. Emma is a good student who lives an active lifestyle, even regularly going on runs. As it nears the end of the winter semester, Emma begins to prepare for her exams. However, this is also when the seasons start to change from winter to spring. Trees are swaying and pollen is in the air. Emma is now sneezing and irregularly has a runny nose. She's experiencing seasonal allergies. Emma does not want her allergies to prevent her from doing well in her classes. She recently learned about non-prescription, over-the-counter medication for allergy symptoms. However, she's unsure as to which one she should take. To make the right choice, she needs our help. Before we explore what allergy medications are available to her, let us get to know how allergies come to be. To understand this, we must say hello to our familiar defense team, the immune system. The immune system is what our body uses to fight foreign bacteria and viruses that have entered the body. One function of the immune system is to produce a chemical known as histamine. Histamine is involved in many bodily and brain functions. They are important for cell signaling and the sleep-wake cycle. While being particularly important for regular body function, they are also the driving force for allergic reactions. When your immune system is exposed to allergens such as pollen or a certain type of food, your body releases histamine to get rid of these allergens. Once again, your body is just trying to protect you. Unfortunately, these histamines cause many of the symptoms associated with allergies, such as swelling, itchiness, and sneezing. Keeping in mind what histamines are, drugs that counteract the function of histamines are called antihistamines. These drugs are made to target histamine receptors on cells, which blocks the body's response to histamines. Think of the blocked receptor like a lock, which has been changed and the key can no longer fit. With this, allergy symptoms are reduced, making you feel much better. There are many types of antihistamines and can be administered orally, through nasal sprays, or an eyedropper. These antihistamines are often categorized into two groups, first generation and second generation antihistamines. The two types block the body's response to histamines in separate ways, resulting in different effects on your body. Let's now take a closer look at their differences. First generation antihistamines like Benadryl have a unique pathway in your body. Imagine the blood brain barrier as a security guard for a VIP party, and that VIP party is your brain. The security guard only allows certain things through, like nutrients and oxygen, which your brain needs to function. It's there to protect your brain from toxins and harmful substances. But here's the twist. First generation antihistamines bypass this security guard. They sneak past and enter the VIP party, or your brain, where they work their magic. Once inside, they block histamine receptors in the brain. And what does this mean for you? It means relief. They alleviate allergy symptoms such as runny nose, sneezing, and that irritating itchiness or redness all over your body. But that's not all. Because they can cross the blood-brain barrier, first-generation antihistamines are sometimes used to treat other issues like insomnia and nausea. An example is Benadryl. It provides relief for four to six hours. But here's the catch. This relief comes with consequences. Sedation. You might feel drowsy and have poor concentration. Your sleep might suffer and your memory and attention can take a hit. Not ideal during exam season, right? Accidents. Drowsiness from first-generation antihistamines can lead to accidents if you are not fully alert, and there are even long-term cognitive implications. Some studies suggest a link between first-generation antihistamines and increased risk conditions like Alzheimer's disease and dementia. That is why they are not recommended for long-term use. Other potential side effects include blurred vision, dried mouth, and more. So while first-generation antihistamines like Benadryl can offer relief, they also come with a set of challenges. It is essential to weigh the pros and cons of first-generation antihistamines. Now let's talk about second-generation antihistamines. Unlike first-generation, second-generation antihistamines do not cross the blood-brain barrier. Instead, they target histamines in the body. They can also be administered through various methods such as oral consumption, nasal sprays, or eyedroppers. Second-generation antihistamines alleviate symptoms like sneezing and runny nose just as well, if not better, than first-generation antihistamines. 
But what's great is that because second generation antihistamines do not cross the blood brain barrier, they induce much less drowsiness. This might sound like second generation antihistamines are always the better option, but as always, there are consequences. Second generation antihistamines are known to have side effects such as headaches, cough, and sore throats. You may know second generation antihistamines by their brand names like Claritin or Allegra. If you've taken either of these, then you know they provide a 24 hour relief from the symptoms. Moreover, second generation antihistamines have not been found to be linked with Alzheimer's or dementia. And thus, it is safe for long term use, given that you follow the recommended dosages. Now that we know more about the different allergy medications, let's get back to Emma. So, what should Emma do? Remember, Emma is a student in university preparing for her final exams. Emma wants to be mentally alert and ready for any questions that may appear on her exam. When comparing first and second generation antihistamines, it soon becomes clear which one Emma should purchase to help alleviate her allergy symptoms and which will not give her side effects that could impact her exam performance. So which antihistamines would you choose? Thanks for watching. Information in this video was not presented by healthcare providers. If you have any questions or wish to start using antihistamines such as Benadryl or Claritin or any other allergy medications, please consult a primary healthcare provider first. For more information about allergies and antihistamines, look at the description box below.